Well, what an incredible day we've had here at the Ironman World Championships. We saw some early breakaways during the swimming, both the men's and the women's races, some aggressive riding from the off, some of the pre-race favourites either dropping out or having simply some off days, and a rather big record fall. Yeah, and we have been lucky enough to be here on the ground in Kona to see the whole day unfold and play out. So we're going to be able to give you a very thorough racy recap of the Ironman World Championships. But well, prior to the races actually starting, all the athletes went to bed last night to rather heavy rainfall here in Kona. The streets were beginning to flood. We had some rather big swell coming in on the water. By the morning, that had pretty much cleared, although it did threaten to rain a few times during the swim. Once the athletes were out onto the bike, that all cleared and actually the cloud cover began to dissipate and clear away. Now, if we compare this to last year, we actually had a fair bit of cloud cover for the athletes during the bike. We had fairly still conditions, which a lot of people said led to these ideal conditions and these records being broken. Analysts out there, looked at the weather ahead of 2019 race and said there wasn't going to be this cloud cover and actually we probably wouldn't see these records fall but let's just wait and see but so let's move on now to the racing and because the men went first let's start with that one although both were very very impressive races yes so on that men's swim from the get-go we had known specialist and leader from last year's race here josh amberger from australia pushing the pace from the get-go that pace drew out a group of nine in total in fairly choppy, well, swell, deep swell of uh, swimming and strong currents. So tough conditions by all kinds, which did favor the stronger swimmers. So nine athletes, including pre-race favorites, such as Jan Frodeno, Alistair Brennan was in there, Tim O'Donnell as well. But perhaps surprisingly, the buzz and chatter around the pier in the morning was the fact that Patrick Langer had infiltrated this group. Now, do not get us wrong, he's not a bad swimmer, but I don't think any of us predicted that he would be in any elite league group of swimmers coming out of the water. And as I think we were probably going to find out fairly early in the bike, the race dynamics were definitely affected by his inclusion in that group. So this group, including Lang, came out of the water some three and a half minutes in front of the next sizable pack out of the water. And then further back yet again, we had the likes of powerhouse bikers, Sebastian Keenley, Cameron Worth, and Lionel Sanders all exiting around about the five minute mark. Well now back to that lead group because some interesting race dynamics were happening very early on considering it was an Ironman race. It seemed like they were flexing some guns, flexing their muscles and maybe trying to see who they could get rid of namely Patrick Langer, the defending Ironman world champion. Now we actually were at the top of Polanyi Road and we saw Alistair Brownlee absolutely tearing up that hill very early into the race and we saw Patrick Langer a little bit off the back of that group. Now we did actually then witness Patrick Langer dropping out about 50 kilometers into the ride so it clearly just wasn't his day. Now further into the bike leg and around the Harvey turn point that main group that lead group had been whittled down to four members. We had Jan Frodeno, Alistair Brownlee, Tim O'Donnell and the swim leader Josh Amberger with those uber bikers in a group a little bit further back but they had now brought that deficit back to two minutes and 40 seconds. Yeah, and then once we started that long, fast ascent off of Javi, the lead group of four started to whittle down. First, it was that lead swimmer that we had, Josh Amberger, getting detached from the group at the base of the Javi climb. So that was getting on to about 40 miles from the finish. So he was the first to go. And then as they approached T2, it was actually two-time Olympic gold medals, Alistair Branley, who then struggled to keep with the pace of Tim O'Donnell and Jan Frodeno. And indeed, by the time that they got to T2, it was Jan Frodeno who had pushed on himself for a solo entry about 90 seconds clear of Tim O'Donnell. Meanwhile, Alistair Brownlee ended up getting swallowed up, I suppose you could say, by that uber group of riders, including the likes of Sebastian Keenley, Lionel Sanders, Cameron Worth, Swiss athlete Philip Kootenay. There was also German uber biker, if we can call him, and the, all these, Boris Stein, because he set the fastest bike time of the day with four hours, 13 and 18 seconds. We're now onto the run and onto Alihi Drive, which was hot and still as ever. And some athletes started to struggle, notably Alistair Brownlee, which to be honest, we were not too surprised with given that he is a first timer to this course. But then other athletes really started to show their hand particularly Ben Hoffman and Braden Curry as they start to move through the field. Yeah, and then as we move through a lead drive up Polanyi and onto the Queen K, the next major moving ground in this race is the famed Energy Lab. And once we got into the Energy Lab, there was definitely some movement, as there always is in this race year upon year. And it was Ben Hoffman who'd really started to rocket into that 
podium potential position. And we also saw the emergence finally of an athlete that we had barely seen all day since coming out of the water and thinking, geez, he's quite a long way down. And that was second place finisher last year, Belgium's Bart Ehrenut. And he had managed to really creep into that top 10 whilst in the energy lab. Well, on to the finish line. And while well, we were stood there waiting for Jan Frodeno to come in, and he was rocketing mm. through the final few kilometers. And actually, until the last kilometer, we weren't sure whether he was maybe going to break the course record or, or not. Maybe just really enjoy the finish line. But well, yeah, he was getting close, but he did. He did it in a time of seven hours, 51 minutes and 13 seconds, breaking the previous record by one minute and 26 seconds. It was Tim O'Donnell that came in in second, eight minutes and 28 seconds down in a time of seven hours, 59 minutes and 41 seconds. And he looks absolutely delighted with that performance. He said it was a dream come true for him to go sub eight in Kona, which we can well imagine. Yeah. Um, and then we had Sebastian Keenley coming in very close behind in third place with eight hours and two minutes with four seconds to be third place finisher in Kona. And also on eight hours and two minutes, we had Ben Hoffman coming in in fourth place. Fifth place went to Canworth in 8.06. And then close behind yes. was Joe Skipper on 8.07, who actually suffered a puncture earlier in the race. So Fantastic performance from Joe, absolutely. We're a little bit biased because we're Brits here in Kona, but yeah, it was a really great result from Joe. But well, Fraser, it has been a long day and we have got a beautiful sunset over to the side of us now, but it does mean we're losing light. So we are now just going to move location for the women's race, so we're under some lights for you guys. Right, welcome back. We've done our switch of positions and the sun has dropped, but we did manage to catch the sunset, so don't feel too sorry for us. And we're now ready to give you a good thorough recap of the women's race. Yeah, the sun does go quick here in Hawaii. And it was a very exciting women's race. Lucy absolutely flew off the start line and for a second we thought she might be going solo. But Lauren Brandon did manage to find her toes. Those two led the swim out with quite a gap to the rest of the field. The next group to come out was quite large. It was around 12 athletes with a second or two between each of the athletes. And that included the likes of Danny LaReef, Anne Haug and Sarah Truth. Yeah, but actually the shock of the women's race came fairly soon after this group had formed out in the Queen K Highway because by less than 25 miles, around about the 23 mile marker, word got out that Daniela Reef had actually dropped off the pace, which is just not something that we're used to hearing at all with somebody of her caliber. There was then another large group on the road a few minutes behind, which was about 10 athletes, including the likes of Kaiser Sally and Heather Jackson. And by mile 49, that chase group would now be whittled down to just four members. We had Sarah Crowley, Imogen Simmons, Annie Howe, and Carrie Lesser. They've managed to bring the gap to Lucy down to just five minutes now, and Lauren Brandon has slipped into sixth place. But unfortunately, we were witnessing Daniela Reef having, well, not an ideal day for her. Her gap was now up to eight minutes and 30 seconds to the leader, which was Lucy. Yeah, and that larger chase group, I suppose we call them, that was yet further behind had started to splinter itself as well. And then at the turn point, it was clear that Lucy was actually starting to really mean business because she had increased her gap on the next chasers on the road to about seven minutes. And then halfway back down the descent, from Javi, which is really fast and pushing on. She really seemed to show that she was meaning business because Daniela was now down to 10 minutes in arrears. Meanwhile, Daniela Blimmel and Laura Phillip are working hard to bridge the gap up to that lead group containing the likes of Annie Howe. They did this a little before mile 87 on the road. Also of note, Heather Jackson was really making a move through the field and she was now up into eighth place. Yeah, and by the time they hit T2, it was Lucy Charles who got there first, canning an eight minute buffer over at the next athlete who was Daniela Blymel, who came in next, leading a group including the likes of Annie Haug, Sarah Crowley, Laura Phillip, and Carrie Lester. And from the off, it clearly looked like Anne and Sarah were on a mission and really trying to stamp their mark on the race. Not to say that uh, Lucy didn't look like she was running well, she certainly was, but it was clear that those two were really starting to eat into her lead that she'd established. Yeah, so by mile eight on the course, actually, Anna Howe can actually halved her deficit to mm -hmm. Lucy and finally made the pass on Lucy in the energy lab with 10 miles to go. Also, we saw Sarah Crowley running fantastically. She was moving her way up through the pack um, and then closer to Lucy. She got sight of Lucy and made the move past her with about four miles to go, but she really did ramp the pace up quite early because then Lucy incredibly passed her again. Yeah, and then as we hit the finishing straight, it was Annie Haug who established a fantastic race and 
finish that off with an eight hours and 40 minutes, 10 seconds, which was some six minutes 35 ahead of Lucy Charles after she came in in second place. And then third place was Sarah Crowley, eight minutes and three seconds in arrears. And in fourth place, we had Laura Phillip in a time of eight hours and 51 minutes. Heather Jackson coming in in fifth place in time of eight hours and 54. And then Kaiser Sally in sixth with eight hours and 55. Yeah, so it has been an absolute privilege to be here on the island again to watch this race unfold. There's always different things that spring up. There is unexpected results that you just would never have thought. I, for one, I don't know about you, Mark, didn't expect to not see Daniela Rafer right up there on the top of the podium. No, and also to see Jan Frodeno yet again breaking the record. I did not expect no. to see that record broken quite so soon. Um, Absolutely an amazing day. If you've enjoyed today's video and enjoyed the race, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, you can click on the globe, subscribe to the channel, and be notified when our future videos come out. Yeah, and unfortunately, our good friend of the channel, David McNamee, did not have the day he hoped for this uh, year on the island. But we did do a video with him already this week. So if you want to see our run drills with David, you can get that here. And if you'd like to see how to win the Ironman World Championships in Kona, we did do a video with a number of the past winners. You can see that by clicking just down here.